Hey everyone, in this video today, I'm gonna talk to you all about what is identity and access management. So, when I first started my career in security consulting, I joined a big four consulting firm and they put us in two different tracks. One was called threat and vulnerability management. That is the path that I thought I was gonna go into when I joined in security for this firm. But instead they put me in identity and access management. So here's exactly what that means. In security, there are different domains, one of them being how access is controlled into systems. For example, access to log onto a computer, access to get into a building, access to log into a privileged administrative part of a network. Identity and access goes around user and access. So for me, when I log into a network, I have to use my username and password, which is issued to me. On my account, I have specific privileges to access certain parts of the system. If I worked in the finance part, I'd probably get access to a finance or accounting system. If I worked in HR, I probably would get access to like Workday software, which allowed me to enter in user records. So identity and access essentially figures out what is tied to a particular identity, like a login, the types of accesses they're supposed to have, and make sure that the access is in the systems when they're supposed to be. So in my case, I was in implementations and operations of identity and access. So what I would do is put in an identity and access management system, like Oracle Identity Manager, SailPoint, and Okta. What these do is control access to systems. If a new hire comes in today, what is the workflow that gives that person the right access at the right time? And likewise, if someone is being offboarded from a company, how do we remove their access from a timely manner? Those are the kind of questions that identity and access management covers. So in the implementation of the system, I would design workflows, like when someone gets into an HR system, how do we pull the record into the identity platform? And then from there, based on their job role, what kind of access is supposed to be granted. If a network or a, a company has like 20 different applications, how do we get those 20 applications to get the right access at the right time? And also if someone changes their password, how do we get that password change in not just one system, but the other 20 systems that I just mentioned? Those are things that identity and access covers. So in my case, we would build these things called the identity management system, of course, which is where users go into and users go out of, and then in there, building the connections out to these different applications. So for example, we'd have to build a connection to like the Workday HR system, or build a connection to RackF system, or build a connection to like AWS platform. So when like a developer comes in, their identity gets created, and then their identity gets created in all the different 20 systems making sure that everything gets provisioned at the right time. If things don't get provisioned at the right time, what is the workflow to make sure that they do get the access and what is the backup way to get them the access that they need? That's what identity and access covers. In one client, I was working in like a retail store type client. So they had many different stores around the globe. And what I would do is I built that system and then I built the workflow to be able to get the warehouse employees the access that they need so they can access like the scan guns, the inventory management system and all that stuff. So that was my role in the system. And I was supposed to be able to develop software. So I had to know like Java to be able to build the connectors, to be able to plug into these different systems, to talk to these different systems that we were interacting with. And likewise, we had to know the operations part because after we build up a whole system, it's time to turn it over. Sometimes they ask us to maintain the system going forward. And sometimes the client would just want to take that into their operations group and maintain it themselves. My projects were very long, mainly because we would start with like the requirements phase, the build out of the whole system, which would take like six months to a whole year or even multi-year, depending on how many systems they want to integrate into this thing. And then from there, if they want us to help them troubleshoot issues, that can turn into a multi-year type engagement. So over my course in my identity and access management career, large multi-million dollar projects for these large Fortune 500 companies in terms of just managing their identities and their accesses. Other use cases that we'd build out in identity and access include things like 
if I'm sitting here in the US and someone logs into my identity in Japan, does that get blocked? That's identity and access. In some other cases, multi-factor authentication. So when you log in, it prompts you for like a secondary text message or you have to log into an app to get a code to type that in. That's identity and access. Or also like single sign-on, where if I sign in with my same ID, I can log into all the 20 systems with just that username and password and not have to remember 20 different passwords. Those are other examples of identity and access management use cases. That's all I have for you today. Please like and subscribe if this helps you out. Please let me know what you think down below in the comments and if there's any other topic you want me to cover. Thank you and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.